A new challenger is approaching in the AI smart glasses battle that is shaping up in 2026. Say hello to Google's AI smart XR glasses. Google's attempt to try and enter the AI smart glasses market and show dominance. Granting users a 70 degree FOV for a giant virtual screen anywhere you go, they can run full Android apps and floating windows, and even let users circle to search on anything they look at with their fingers. The Google AI Smart XR glasses are just one of the many things Google has been doing recently as Google has been on a massive winning streak as it ramps up improvements across the board. They're bringing us a new Nano Banana 2 Flash model and have made game-changing memory improvements to all their AI models using a new architecture known as Titans. Due to this, OpenAI seems to be in a panic as in response to Google's dominance, they plan to release ChatGPT 5.2 today, which has passed, meaning they failed at their own launch, likely delaying as the project was not yet ready. The writing seems on the wall as the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, says that it seems Google's time to rise is coming, and he's frankly surprised it took this long. This is Google's game now to win, will they? In a previous video, we had talked about the newest additions coming to the AI glasses industry from places like Alibaba's Quark, and Meta's Ray-Ban. Alibaba's newest cheap and efficient glasses are set to hit shelves in 2026. However, now they are not the only ones, as Google is looking to capitalize on the domestic front. In 2026, they will be releasing their own AI-powered smart glasses, competing with Meta not just from abroad, but directly from the home front. Google's new AI smart glasses are being called the XR glasses, as part of a larger project known as Project Aura and every model will be equipped with their powerful Gemini models, which have been dominating many charts. They will be releasing two different kinds of glasses very soon, with Meta's new Ray-Ban Artemis model still not expected until later in 2027, as we reported on previously, giving Google an entire year's leap ahead. The first type of Google AI Smart XR glasses being released in 2026 are the screen-free assistance-based glasses, which use built-in speakers, microphones, and cameras to let you chat naturally with Gemini, take photos, and get help making them slightly more advanced than Google's once-failed Google Glass models, which were more focused on video capture. The primary competitor to Meta and Quark will come later on, which is display glasses. Display glasses add an in-lens display that privately shows you helpful information right when you need it, like turn-by-turn -turn navigation or translation captions, giving you the power of many apps and the internet itself right from the convenience of your own glasses. Just like out of a sci-fi movie, I mean, imagine trying to follow a cooking recipe, but instead of needing paper for it, the recipe is just virtually displayed in one of your lens. Contact eyes directly for you to simply follow at your leisure while you're cooking. That is the future that Google is not only banking on, but offering to you moving forward. The key to solidifying Google's dominance will likely come in specs, which have yet to be released as well as price. Google could price these as a middle point between Meta Ray-Bans and Quarks costing slightly more than quarks but having better specs. Or they could make very cheap glasses with lower grade specs. Time will tell. Google's long-term strategies have only continued. However, the Google AI Smart XR glasses coming soon are not the only avenue they are exploring. Google's Nano Banana has been relatively successful and culturally beloved by many within the AI enthusiast space. So much so, they will be doubling down soon and have plans to release a second Flash model, but this time specifically for its Nano Banana 2 model, allowing users who love the AI model several cheaper alternative benefits for many and all of their needs. This follows a previous example they had done with the Nano Banana 1, in which later down the line they also released a Nano Banana Flash model for its Nano Banana 1. An AI Flash model has several key benefits suited toward its primary purpose. A flash model reduces server and device load depending on where its model finds itself deployed for the end user, which could be critical for those with lesser internet connections or lower end hardware. For developers, it keeps operational costs down immensely and helps to keep things extremely affordable for everyone involved. However, the most important pro for most users will be the flash model's speed. Flash models are incredibly efficient at generating images at lightning fast speeds for more time-sensitive users or for those who need image creation in bulk and who might have deadlines. The only major con of a flash model for most users is that flash models are optimized towards speed, not accuracy, meaning that a flash model could get certain aspects of things wrong in a project, which some users might find unacceptable. The Nano Banana Flash model has major benefits for developers, not only for the reasons we outlined, but also due to the sheer scale at which they might find themselves needing the creation of assets. 
Video game makers usually need hundreds of assets at a time. Coders need thousands of lines of code that, even when written correctly, still need to be tested, tweaked, and sometimes even fully rewritten. This all takes extreme amounts of time, time which, thanks to these flash models, can be extremely shortened. Something Google is looking to fix going forward with all of its AI technology that could bring massive improvements across the board is its AI's long-term memory problem. The issue many AIs face in all facets of use is that of their inability to retain deep, long-term memory of conversations or prompt sessions. For example, when using a chatbot, you might have previously talked to the AI about a topic several messages ago and you might reference it. The AI likely will not remember this important piece of information, and as a result, it is lost in further conversations, ruining the experience for the user. The longer consequences of this exist in applications as well, such as translation prompts. For example, should you ask that a language be translated from a web page in a specific way, it might get that way right, but if you simply say, now do it for this language instead, instead of a much more detailed description, it will simply do a basic translation. Google believes it has found two new solutions to this and is hoping to get a massive improvement toward things as a result. Google's first solution to this is what they are calling the Titan's architecture. In simple terms, drawing from human psychology, have you ever randomly remembered something while in the middle of doing something else and it becomes critical to your thoughts for a while? In essence, that is the Titan's architecture solution. When new information significantly differs from what the model currently remembers, the solution is activated and forces the model to actively retrain and expand its parameters again on returning to a task in a previously opened session. The key is surprise. In other words, how surprised or confused the model is from the prompt. If the model is surprised or confused, it will search its memories harder than it would have in previous scenarios. The second solution Google has brought itself is the Myras framework. The Myras framework is less of a direct technology and more of a classification system for AI itself to use, classifying AI architectures instead of distinct systems as different methods of solving the same fundamental problem, efficiently combining new information with old memories without losing essential concepts. Using these two concepts for testing has brought about significant benchmark improvements for all of its models testing these aspects out. It's with Google's sudden push with all these new technologies and systems, as well as recently Jeffrey Hinton, someone called the godfather of AI, stating Google is set to win at this rate, that OpenAI has begun to panic. Fearing that their era is coming to an end, as many are predicting, OpenAI isn't going down without a fight and is sounding the alarm, activating a code red within the company. As a result, they are set to release GPT 5.2 earlier than expected to try to stay competitive with Google. While a release date hasn't been announced yet, they will likely work on it as long as they can until Google is visibly seen deploying all of these plans of theirs, in which case they will then drop GPT 5.2. Meanwhile, while OpenAI is panicking about Google, OpenAI's direct enemy, Elon Musk's XAI's Grok, is giving ChatGPT a major run for its money. The newest Grok model on the X platform, formerly Twitter, is not only powerful but is well-liked by average users who, on average, don't even usually enjoy or like AI space products, establishing itself toward a broader market. It is actually being seen as appealing to humans for more than just logical problems. While ChatGPT tends to get more simplified problems down correctly and efficiently, Grok is well known for giving more human-based responses and even answers questions that are more opinionated rather than factual, which is why Grok has recently even begun to be used in psychological testing. This is a major danger for OpenAI as Elon Musk is a direct enemy of OpenAI, as stated several times publicly over many tweets over the years. While much of the reason can be up for speculation, it is a known fact that Elon Musk co-founded OpenAI and ultimately ended up leaving the company. That alone could explain everything to everyone. With Google set to take center stage and OpenAI having direct enemies in the race, their days might just be numbered moving forward as the tech race continues for all companies, not only in the US but globally. We will continue to keep you up to date with all things in the AI space, so please like this video and consider subscribing for more content just like this, and feel free to leave a comment telling us what you think is going to happen going forward. Do you think OpenAI's days are numbered? Or are they about to blow everyone away with a surprise? This has been AI365, and we hope to see you again in the next video.